This is actually the closest we can get to um, what it'll be like to be in space. Houston, we have liftoff underwater. Strap on your moon flippers, because we're headed to the Johnson Space Center in Houston, Texas, where we found, without a doubt, the largest indoor pool in the world. But in order to take a dip, you can't just walk in off the street. you got to have some serious space cred. But we're here to give you a behind-the-scenes look at this enormous pool that simulates outer space right here on Earth. I will be going to spend about four to six months on the space station as a flight engineer on board the International Space Station. In just a few months, NASA astronaut Nicole Stott will be living in space. And this ginormous pool is crucial to her mission because it's here, underwater, that NASA trains astronauts for their flight to the International Space Station. <laughs> incredible and it's incredibly blue and clear and just fantastic for the role that it plays in our training. We've had uh, astronauts from all different countries, from Russia, Japan, Canada, from Switzerland, the Netherlands. Opened in 1997, the Neutral Buoyancy Laboratory, or the NBL as astronauts call it, is 200 feet long and 40 feet deep. And at 816,000 cubic feet, able to hold 6.2 million gallons of water. It's about six times deeper than an Olympic-sized swimming pool. And why are astronauts diving in? Because it simulates the feeling of weightlessness to create a zero-gravity environment. This is the only place in the world that we can train in a near-zero-gravity environment. The best place we can simulate zero-gravity is underwater. So that's basically what's going on. So how does it work? Simple weight packs are added and removed from astronauts to achieve what's called neutral buoyancy. You're going to be neutrally buoyant in the water. It means that you're not going to rise in the water column, you're not going to sink in the water column. And this is a very close analogy to what you get in space where you're basically just suspended there. But before these moonwalkers can dive, they first have to get suited up. In the morning when the astronauts are getting suited up, they're uh, making sure all of their gear is fit correctly. Engineers and technicians are basically getting them ready to be put in the water. The suits that we utilize in the water are very, very similar to the suits that we use on orbit. Same materials, same configuration. And because these spacesuits weigh over 300 pounds, it takes a large crane to lower the astronauts into the pool. There's actually a large stand that allows both crew members to be attached by their backpacks into a hard mount. That is attached to the crane, and we can actually lift the crew members in and out of the water that way. The first time that you get to get into the big white suit that we use for the spacewalks, and you come into this pool and you get lowered down in, and it's like this, this world opens up to you that's just crystal clear, and it's just a really, a really amazing experience. Making this swimming hole even more like the final frontier, the space station inside of it. This massive pool houses full-size mock-ups of the actual space station components. I think what makes this pool different and not like any other pool in the world is that it has a space station in it. And it has all of the stuff that we have in space. On average, an astronaut spends about 10 to 20 sessions in the water training for flight. They are practicing their spacewalk that they will be doing. It's the first spacewalk on their flight. The Neutral Buoyancy Laboratory gives us the opportunity to work on something as close as possible before getting into the vacuum of space. Typically, we're in the pool by 9, and we get out at 3, so, you know, 6 hours in the pool. And it's non-stop. Non-stop and very dangerous, because the astronauts are at risk for suit leaks and possible loss of airflow. Keeping them safe? An average of six scuba divers in the water for every two astronauts. They'll have safety divers assigned to them that will spend the day with them, making sure that everything they're doing is safe and that there are no problems with the suit. Yep, in the event of an emergency, safety divers are standing by. And these aren't some beach bum lifeguards. They're also underwater guides for the astronauts. 
helping them to move around the space station since it's hard to swim in the heavy suits. There have been some instances where we've had to pull people out of the suit uh, because they weren't either feeling well or just had a medical issue. The most common condition? Let us introduce you to the fishbowl effect. What's that? When underwater, the helmet creates a distorted fishbowl-like view. Look through it long enough and you could get dizzy. And a bout of dizziness is trouble. Because if an astronaut has a weak stomach in this enormous pool, watch out. I feel sorry for the person that's inside the suit who gets a little nauseous in the helmet. Because there's no place for it to go except right back in your face. And that's not a pretty sight. Yeah, that's the opposite of pretty. Sometimes your nose is running, or you're coughing, or you got a hair in your face, and you just get past it and work for five and a half more hours. I became a little bit disoriented, and so I, I closed my eyes, and I asked myself, okay, where am I at in the pool? And when I opened my eyes, everything fell into place, and I said, ah, I know where I'm at. I can't mention the crewman's name, uh, but I will say that we had a crewman who asked if he could come out of the pool. When the crew person came up out of the pool, we got him out of the suit. I have never seen anybody get out of a suit so fast and put on little blue booties and run to the bathroom. But a case of the pukes is a small price to pay for getting into this mammoth pool. That's because the next stop for these astronauts, outer space. I feel 100% confident this is the coolest facility. It totally got me where I needed to be in order to be successful on orbit. A success indeed. This scientifically spectacular pool takes one small stroke for man and one giant lap for mankind. Coming up, a private backyard pool that's so tricked out, you'll think you're in Vegas. It's something you would find at a hotel, but it's in someone's backyard, so it's completely amazing. And later, an extreme water slide that shoots right through a shark tank. Going through a shark tank just kind of gets your heart beating a little faster. When Extreme Pools returns.